If you want to learn how to control watercolour and learn how to paint this beautiful Cape Gooseberry with easy to follow steps, then this is the place for you. Let's get into it. I've done a really simple outline of the Cape Gooseberry or Fasalis as they're also known, um, just by tracing it down like this. Now, of course, you can draw your drawing freehand if you want to, but this is just for speed. Let's talk about paints. The paints that I'm using today are from May Marie Blue, apart from a transparent orange, which is by Schmincke. But of course, use whichever colors that you have within your own kit. Nickel Titanium, Burnt Umber, Transparent Yellow, Imperial Red, Viridian and Mars Black are the colours that I've swatched out here. Um, like I said, the transparent orange is from Schmincke. I will link everything in the description underneath here. And also going to be using um, Dr. PH Martin's Bleed Proof White. This is an old spotter brush that I use for mixing. Flat synthetic brush here for blending and lifting out. And my number zero size spotter. And I've also decided to, to use my number five round. This delightful little palette is from Etcher and I'll talk to you a little bit about that later on. And I'm going to be using this sketchbook today. Um, this is 100% cotton cold pressed paper and I thought it would be a really cool idea to have all these tutorials that I'm going to be doing for the next few weeks in this little book so that I can keep them for future reference and have uh, something nice to look back on. So this is a number, number five round by Da Vinci and we're going to be starting off by mixing um, a watery mix of of the transparent orange like this. So you can see me here working wet on dry, which means I'm going to be applying the paint directly onto the fruit, the orange area of the fruit like this, using the tip of my brush to get into the corners um, as I'm showing you here. Now be mindful that this color needs to be the lightest color on the fruit because it needs to be the color of the highlight. So at this point, your paint needs to be really weak. If you are new to watercolour painting, I recommend that you watch this video all the way through because watercolour can have that tricky bit where you think that you've done it wrong, but it's just a case of pressing through and building up your layers slowly and carefully. So I highly recommend that you watch this video all the way through. Now we do have a line drawing and reference photograph to accompany this and indeed all of our tutorials here on YouTube. And I'll tell you a little bit later on how you can obtain them. You'll notice that I've kept the reference photograph in screen for this tutorial. Many of you have asked me to do this, so I've listened to you and this is what we're doing from now on. Now that the first wash is dry, I've mixed another wash with a tiny bit more, another puddle with a tiny bit more transparent orange here, and I'm applying it over to create our next layer of paint wet on dry to work around the highlight that we've painted in. You'll notice that I have a little puddle of water on my palette and I'm using this to clean my brush and pat it on the kitchen roll to blend my paint. Keep an eye out of that little highlight on the bottom right hand side. If I were to dip my brush in my water jar to clean it, it would just flood the brush with water and it would mean that I would lose control of the paint. So just keep this in mind when you're working. You can see I'm patting the brush on the kitchen paper and just blending it through like this. Just using the tip of my brush to blend those colours together. And dropping in a tiny bit more of that beautiful transparent orange. It's actually one of my favourite colours to use. Like I said, I will link all of the materials I'm going to be using today in the description box underneath this video so that if you want to check them out for yourself, you can do. Making sure that everything's dry and turning my attention to the papery elements of the plant. I'm now mixing uh, nickel titanium in two puddles here and I'm adding burnt umber to one of them and Mars black to the other. This time I'm working wet in wet. So this means I'm going to be applying the water where I want to drop that paint in. But make sure that the orange area is dry otherwise your paint will bleed into that. So just apply the water where you want to drop the paint. I'm using my number five round just to control the water and make sure that it's in the right place. Carefully working around that fruit. Mm -hmm. 
So here in the UK, we pronounce it Physalis. I know that there are many different ways of pronouncing this, uh, the name of this fruit. Um, it's also known as a Cape gooseberry. So because I think it's an easier thing to pronounce, that's what we're going to be calling it for the purpose of this tutorial. Once I've applied the water, you can see me dropping in the mix of nickel, titanium and burnt umber here. Again, it's a very weak and watery consistency at this point, using the tip of my brush to make sure that the paint is in the correct place as it's settling into the paper. And I'm also taking it over the stalk like this. This is wet on dry. You can see how I'm moving the paint really easily because the paper is damp. I'm picking up some of the Nickel Titanium and Mars Black mix and dropping it in, in here because I felt that I wanted to give it um, a little bit of a different colour um, so that it looked really natural and not flat. I'm not absolutely going true to the photograph as you can see but it's just to give it a little bit of variation. Cleaning my brush and my little puddle that I have here and adding a tiny bit of Nickel Titanium because I felt the outside edge of this element was a kind of a yellowy colour and I wanted to drop this in whilst the paper was still wet. You can see as the paint settles, I'm just using the tip of my brush to manipulate the paint into the pencil line like this. And just dropping in some of that darker color. So I haven't used this particular brand of paper before from Etcher and I have to say it's really, really beautiful. It handles really, really well and it's something I definitely would recommend. So I'm using my flat synthetic brush here now that everything's dry just to blend those colours together. You know that once when uh, watercolour dries it can have a kind of hard edge so I'm using the tip of my number, my flat synthetic brush. This is a number two from Rosemary & Co um, just to kind of um, blend that together and lift out some of the hard edges just using a um, sub kitchen paper and I'm lifting out a tiny bit here just to guide me where I'm going to paint a little bit later on so it has a lighter element here so all I'm doing is using a damp brush and patting it dry with my kitchen paper like this. So you can see the colours I'm pointing to here to mix um, everything together again. So we have the Viridian with the transparent yellow. If you have got a um, colour like a sort of sap green or something like an olive green, you could use that instead. I wanted to try and keep to the same brand in this kit, but if you have got olive green, that would work just as well. This time I'm working wet on dry using my number zero spotter from Rosemary & Co. And I'm working up the stem like this, first of all with the brown mix and then dropping in the green like this. Now at the beginning of this tutorial I said that we have a free line drawing and reference photograph to accompany this tutorial. So the line drawing and reference photograph will be over in our Facebook group. Um, I'll put the link in the description box underneath this video so if you haven't joined us there already then do consider doing so. We are an amazing group of people and you can post your finished paintings there and have some feedback from me and our other wonderful members. And um, at the moment we have two other ways that you can get your line drawing. So if you're not on Facebook and you'd like to have access to it, I've started to put the line drawing on our community tab right here on YouTube so that you can go over to there, do a screenshot and print it out that way. I'm also going to put the line drawing right at the very end of this video so you can screenshot it from there and print it out that way. You've got three different ways that you can access it. 
So now that everything's dry, you can see me adding a mix of transparent orange with a tiny bit of imperial red and applying it to the darker areas of the orange element of the fruit, making sure once again that I'm staying out of those really light highlights and this kind of disappearing edge that we've got on the bottom side of the fruit here. Notice by leaving that tiny little bit lighter, it just makes it look more realistic. And once again, I'm blending it through using a damp brush. So burnt umber and transparent orange here in this puddle. And I'm also adding burnt umber with a tiny bit of the Mars Black. So once again, I'm working wet and wet, of course, making sure that everything's dry. And you can see me here applying the water, avoiding that little bit that we lifted out earlier on. So this is where I want the darker element to be dropped in. So I'm adding here, we've got a mixture of everything in this little puddle. We have um, nickel titanium, green, the green color was viridian and a tiny bit of burnt umber. Dropping in the sort of darker tone here where we've added the water so that it naturally splurges into the um, existing wash like this. And just dropping in the tiniest bit of that darker value there, which is burnt umber and Mars black. Notice how watery the colors are. It's really important at this stage that these colors are weak and watery and look transparent on the paper. We want this to have a papery look to it, so make sure that you mix the paint in a watery consistency to give the illusion of it being really light and transparent. Notice where I'm dropping in the darker values. So once again, we have Mars Black and Burnt Umber here, and I'm just dipping between the brown mixes that I have on my palette. You don't need to be too fussy at this point, just so that you, it's kind of like a, a guide as to where you're going to be dropping in your darker values a little bit later on. So we're just building up our template at this stage so that we know where to drop in the paint later. Now you'll see me here using the tip of my brush to work into the area of the painting that I haven't applied the water. So that will be wet on dry, using the opportunity to take my dry brush into that wash to create the illusion of the veins to make them um, so that we can paint them in a bit later on. So I'm just using the residual paint on my brush to take it down into the pencil line just using the tip of my brush here. You can use any brush that you want to to do this. Um, this particular brush has a really fine point, which is why I'm using it. My spotters are wonderful brushes, but I found I've used them so much that I need to replace them now because they are getting a little bit blunt, which is why I'm using this um, really fine point number five round here from Da Vinci. Dropping in that darker value here, as you can see, leaving little gaps as I go through. If you are enjoying this video, please show it some love by giving it a huge thumbs up. And you may also want to consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that bell notification so that you don't miss brand new tutorials coming out every single Tuesday. We are also over on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour, so do join us there. 
I just want to take a moment to tell you about our Patreon, which at the time of filming has four different membership levels, from mini weekly videos of doodles, vlogs and podcasts, to full-length botanical painting tutorials, which are exclusive to Patreon and are of course ad-free. If this is something that interests you, I've put a link in the description below, plus it's a way for you to support my channel. Okay, so back to the job in hand. I've cleaned down my palette here and I'm mixing burnt umber with a little bit of that beautiful transparent orange. And also we have nickel titanium with a tiny bit of burnt umber. So this beautiful little palette that I'm using here is from Etcher. Um, I bought them, I bought it a few days ago. Uh, I think I've showed it to you in my other video. I absolutely love it because I work with small mixes of paint and what I was finding um, in my other, when I was painting was that the colors would run into each other. I don't particularly like using the, um, the sort of metal tins that you get when you buy your sets of paint because I find they stain, but this is perfect for um, keeping my colors separate and also it's not too big so it's just the right size for in frame so if you want to treat yourself to one of these i'll link it in the description box underneath this video it's a little bit on the pricey side um, but it's such high quality and like i said it keeps the paints separate so you can see now going back to what i'm doing i'm mixing burnt umber and mars black cleaning my brush and just blending it through with a soft damp brush to give it that lovely soft edge and this will give the idea of there being some folds at the top of the Cape Gooseberry like this. But notice how I'm using the tip of the brush just to give that soft blurred edge. And I'm dropping in the Mars Black and Burnt Umber into the area we've just applied like this. I'm using the tip of my brush to outline some of the areas here to give the illusion of there being some veining as we work down the Cape Gooseberry papery section like this. Just keep in mind as you work through with your veining, as you hit the uh, lighter area at the bottom part, your vein needs to be lighter as well. So just add some water or just use the residual paint on the brush. You don't want it to look too artificial. So I'm just adding a really light wash here of nickel titanium and burnt umber and on the other side because I felt it had a sort of yellowy tone, which we're now building up slowly and carefully using that reference photograph as a guide. always blending as I work through. I have done a separate video on how I apply my watercolor paint and how I blend it. And I will, if that's something that interests you, I will link it on the top of your screen now so that you can click through and watch it after this video. I'm adding a watery mix of the transparent orange here because I did feel that there was definitely that kind of element of orange underneath where you can see that uh, orangey color shining through that papery um, shell that we see here. So I've just dropped in a tiny bit of that orange tone and I'm using my flat brush here just to lift out that area that we put in before, that we lifted out before, which has now been lost a little bit by applying all those layers. So that's easily remedied by just using that damp brush and then just patting it dry with some kitchen paper. You have to leave that to dry and I'm just adding another puddle of water here. Once everything's dry, I'm focusing my attention on the stalk 
using my number five round again, using the darker mix of burnt umber and Mars black, carefully applying the paint over the existing washes that we've done. I'm taking this color about halfway up. Using the kind of pat in motion as I go through and just cleaning my brush again, using it damp to blend those colors together into the green wash we've already applied. By using this tap in motion, because the paper is slightly textured, it just helps you control your paint. So just use that kind of gentle patting motion and pull your paint into the areas that you want it to go. I'm just using the outside of my brush to sharpen any areas here. So I'm adding a tiny bit more burned umber to the mix here and using the tip of my brush, pulling out some tiny little hairs as I work through, um, just gently moving that paint to create the illusion of there being a few sort of hairy bits on the stem and I'm upside down doing the other side so I hope you can see me okay. Um, this probably goes no more than um, just under halfway up. And now that this area is dry, you can see me using the tip of my brush to outline some areas just to enhance the areas where the paint has merged together. Just sharpening everything up to make it look deliberate. So this is the Mars Black and a Burnt Umber and I'm just adding a couple of veins here. Noticing how I'm using the areas where the paint has settled into the paper to enhance them as veins as I work through. But everything has to be dry before you do this. Make sure that everything's completely dry otherwise your paint will run into the damp paper and just blur which we don't want it to do at this point. So using the tip of my brush as I'm working through using a lighter pressure as I hit the bottom element. And you could add some water here if you find that your mix is slightly too heavy. So this is gently working through. Now I'm not going to be putting every single vein into this uh, Cape Gooseberry, but it's just to give the viewer the illusion that we have got veins and that it's a really transparent, papery looking shell. I don't know if you'd call it the shell. Maybe you know the, the, um, the terminology of this and if you do know, drop it in the comments below. Um, so once again, using the tip of my brush to enhance the veins, as you can see here. And now I'm putting in some very light veins on this element, like this, using the tip of my brush and just with the residual paint that is on my brush without adding any more because we want it to look really, really natural. If I'd added more paint at this point, it would look really, really false. Now I'm picking up the transparent orange color again and you can see by looking at the photograph, there's kind of like another element of you can see the orange colour coming through that papery shell and I felt that I needed to put this in and you can see I'm just going right up to that pencil line with the orange colour and then waiting for that to settle before I blend it through. I'm now adding a bit more transparent orange along with a tiny bit of that perial red and just really brightening up the orange area of the fruit as you can see once again making sure that I work around that highlight. This really is a beautiful dark colour now and we can see the vibrancy of that beautiful transparent orange. Just mix with a tiny bit of that red tone, cleaning my brush and once again blending through. Thank you. 
remember to stay out of the bottom part of the of that berry because we want the underside of it to show that reflected light but it's really really subtle you can see me here just pushing up that paint into the paint I've already applied rather than pulling it downwards. So now I'm adding a little bit more of the orange colour to the area where it's in shadow and you can see it shining through that papery shell. And just adding a bit more detail here and there. And once again, notice how I'm making the most of where that paint has settled to outline the veins so that it looks deliberate. So looking at the photograph, I can see that there's a darker element here. So I'm applying the mix of Mars Black and Burnt Umber, just a tiny amount to give the illusion of this bit being in shadow. and just sharpening up any edges that I feel need to be tidied up. You can see how I'm just dipping in and out of the little puddles on my palette here. Now this area is definitely in shade, so I'm just outlining the fruit here and then I'll blend it through as usual. Now you'll notice from the photograph that there is an element of um, sort of shadow where it's sitting on the table when I took the photo, but I'm not going to paint that in because uh, traditional botanical paintings don't have that kind of shadow in there. Now I know I've done many tutorials where I have painted this in, but for this one I think it would look really cool just without the shadow and as it is. So I've left that out, but of course if you want to paint that in, you could paint that in using something like um, a really light Payne's grey or something like that, or even the neutral tint that we've used in this tutorial but I've decided to leave it blank. So if you really are enjoying this kind of detailed uh, tutorial where we're painting in lots of lines and that sort of thing. We have got another tutorial that you may like for this sycamore. I'll put a card on the top of your screen now so that if you want to take a look at that after this tutorial you can click through and have a look at that. Well we're painting a sort of similar technique with lots of this little veining and intricate parts which I know many of you really really enjoy. So click through to that and take a look if you want to. I'll also put a playlist of botanical painting tutorials at the end of this video um, just before I display the line drawing. So I'm building up these layers once they're dry just to give that um, shadow area a little bit more of a darker value and I'm also outlining the orange berry as you can see here. and just sharpening up those veins.
And once more, I did feel that the berry needed a tiny bit more oomph, so I'm adding a bit more of that orange colour here. So this is just the transparent orange with a tiny bit of perial red. And just a tiny bit on this element here, where we can see it shining through. So now I'm using the bleed proof white. You don't have to do this. Um, I know that a lot of people don't like to add white paint. This is my number two size spotter, which has a really fine point, but you can use whichever brush that you have that has a really sort of sharp point to it. I'm using this just to enhance some of the colors here and there that I felt needed a little bit of an extra sort of boost. And it really works well on this part here where you can see the little bits of hair, the sort of fluffy bits. So I just felt that by adding these tiny little hairs with the bleed proof white, it really gave it another dimension. And I'm also adding a few white veins here and there. But like I said, you don't have to use the bleed proof white. And if you did want to use white paint, you could use a white gouache or even sort of um, a Chinese white that you may have within your kit, or you don't need to use it at all. But I just felt that because I had it, um, it would be a really nice way of adding a bit more detail. So it's just a case of finishing up now and adding a bit more detail here and there. Um, I'll stop talking and say thank you so much for watching. Remember to stay until the end where you get access to your reference photograph and I'll see you next week.